Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. We'll make mention of his name. Amen. Um, we have another day to get into the word, to draw closer to God, to listen to his voice, to um, just, just listen to what he's teaching because he's the teacher and we're the student. Amen. So um, today we'll be looking at Adrian. We finished Harden Adrian's and back! Huh? Something after Harden Time. He abandoned me yesterday. Nah, I had to sleep, baby. Oh, baby, I had to sleep. Alright, well, what were we looking at? That's I didn't know. Um, uh, after Harden Time. We looked at plowing the field. We looked at plowing the field. I'm um, hearing, no. We looked at Harden Times yesterday. I think it's plowing the field or something. Plow the field. Plow the field? Plow the field. Okay. Plow the field. You ready for some work? I hope you're ready for some work. Put on your boots, Adrian. I don't work with boots. No, I work with boots, so I have my boots on and my overalls and my hat. I don't need them things. <laughs> no, what we do when we're going to work is we put on the armor of Christ. Some reason I'm blue again, but that's all right. All right, Adrian, you can have you you want it? Yeah, you'll be typing. You'll be typing. Of course, he he loves to type. No, that's yes, not he does. That's right. Adrian loves to type. <laughs> Come on, he loves to type. So I'll be here on this one, and he'll be there on that one. Fair enough. I don't know. We'll be fair enough. All right, so. We're doing, what are we doing? Plow the field? See. Plow the field. You want to pray? I'll see. What was it, guys? Oh, we have one for Christ. One for Christ and done for Satan. And what's his name? Matthias. Yeah, you got it. Mat Matthias. Matthias or something. Matthias. I can't pronounce the guy's name. I think it's Matthias. I think it's Matthias. Matthias. Somebody, <laughs> his name is Matthias, I think, or Matthias, I don't know, um, Matthias or Matthias, um, John, I remember John, okay, so John, oh, we're going to write him Matthias John, give me his number, but I lost it, 672 something, something, just something. Matthias John. Amen. So that's a brother that um that's joining us, the brother in Christ. I can't get this thing to stay somewhere. Just bear with me. I've like all over the place. There we go. Stay. Good song. No, please. Okay, here we go. Alright, you ready? Adrian's got the um thing, so we're ready? No. We're doing plow the field. So Father, we ask that you would just Take over, Lord God, that you would lead us in the way that you show us, that you would teach us, as we're the students and you're the teacher, Daddy. Adrian, pray. Amen. Amen. No, pray. <laughs> just pray. You ask. Um, I just pray to uh, give us um, scriptures uh -huh. yeah, to provide and um, he makes us a quick one. He like, makes it a what? A quick one. A, a very, quick one. Very sweet. What kind of what kind of prayer is that? Oh, is he rushing the Holy Spirit? I don't yo. Rush anything. I just, I just see it. Uh, he means he makes it a good one. Always oh, a good one. Are you damaged? No. Okay. Sherry trying to not kill Adrian yet. Your lock fell down. Mm -hmm. Your lock fell down? Pick not it up. Alright, this has enough um Look, we're going to have to come. Okay, here we go. This could plug on. Just plug it on really quick because it has like two bars. All right. So we're doing plow the field. Yeah. Hey. Uh. All right. Yesterday, we looked at hard end times and we looked at the, the affliction of God's people. Um, please stay here. The affliction of God's people to um, to continue the work. Basically, because that's what the Antichrist is about. That's why he's here to um, cause havoc on God's people. 
So, Adrian, without much further ado, stop. Don't go quiet like that. Come on, you can do it. So, we're looking at Claw the Field. Anything that comes to mind, take your time. First thing. First, no, come on. This is this is how good it is. <laughs> um. I hear something. Uh, Wait, tell me, Cher. No, you go speaking, ahead. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Tell me. Tell me what you hear. I don't hear anything. You you were gonna say something. Come on. <laughs> hey, what? I forget what I was gonna say. Oh no, I'm sorry. Father, just give a box to him, please. I I do that all the time too. In my big mouth. I hear the harvest is plenty. See? But the laborers are few. What do you hear? I don't come back to me at all. No? Okay. So we can go with this one for now. Until he'll bring it back to you, you'll see. Um, where's that? Matthew nine three seven. Mm -hmm. Verse thirty six. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, please. Oh, we we just did a dark here. We did. When he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Uh huh. Verse thirty-seven. Then he said to his disciples, "The harvest is wait, plentiful." Wait, wait, you're, you're rushing it away. Oh, okay, oh. slow down. Go, go again. From where? From the beginning? From, yeah, 36. When he saw the crowd, he, saw the crowd. he was moved with compassion uh -huh. for them because they were harassed and helpless, uh -huh. like sheep without a shepherd. Uh -huh. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Uh -huh. Verse 38, ask the Lord of the harvest. I, I hear he sent them out two by two. He sent out the 70 two by two, something like that. 70 is it? He sent and out 70. He sent them out two by two. Oh, oh who are Ten one. Do what? Luke ten one. Luke ten one. Uh huh. Luke ten one. Reading on what? Um, nine fifty two then. Wait, what? I just have to read before it. Yeah. So I have to put in the last shop, last words in the last chapter. Yeah. Oh, he's teaching me now. Yes. Okay, you're right. You're right. Wow. He's teaching me my words. Yeah, what I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I forgot. He's reminding me. Verse 62. Then Jesus declared. Luke 9. 62. 62. Okay. Well, 9-1. Yeah, yeah. Huh? 9-1. 10-1. Nine, oh, ten one. Ten one. Yeah. So Luke nine sixty two. Right. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Then Jesus declared, "No one who puts his hand to the plow ah. and then looks back, look back, is fit for the kingdom of God." That was the first thing I actually heard with the plow, but I chose not to. But go ahead. Um, Just now, wait. I hear. Let me go bury my father.
Let me bury my father. Let me go bury my father. Wait. No. Wait, no. Wait, yeah, well, go ahead. Let me go bury my father. First. Let me first go and bury my father. Let me go bury my father first. Either or. I didn't first there. Yeah, Luke nine fifty nine. Huh? Luke nine fifty nine. Luke nine fifty nine. Okay, so read fifty eight to sixty. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Mm -hmm. Verse fifty nine. Then he said to another man, Follow me. Lord, the man replied, First let me go and bury my father. Verse 60. But Jesus told them, Let the dead bury their own dead. You, however. He who receives you receives me. But he does he who right? receives. Well, I hear in this, I don't know, I write this. Receives you. Receives me. Okay, so, all right, so let's examine this first, right, before we go there. Read Luke 9, 15. Let me read to you. Let me let you do all the work, right? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's a team effort. We're a go team person. Okay, we sound like the Power Rangers. Oh, no. There we go. What is this? Where's the Bible go? Okay. I jumped into an alternate universe here with half the book being not the Bible. The studies. Okay, here we go. What are we looking at? Luke 9, no, 59. Luke, where are you? So here I am. Luke 6, 8, 9, 59. All right, here we go. And verse 59, <clears throat> sorry, in verse 58, right? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. So everything God made has a home. What does that tell you? Uh, it's everything our home. Everything You're pushing that. Look, you know. Steve. Uh, huh? He wants, he wants everybody, what? He, yeah, okay, if God, if God, God did, actually. So everything God made has a form. Everything. He said, foxes have holes and birds in the air, or birds of the air have nests. He's mindful of creation. He's he's already provided for them everything that they need, right? Yeah. Including food and clothing. Their feathers would be their clothing. Okay. So it's okay if we ran about naked anyway, because this is our comfort, right? But we can't do that in this crazy world because well, you know, all the fall and everything. But Okay, so birds have feathers for covering, animals have fur. That's like their clothes. Speak about it, speak. <laughs> speak about, we're looking at Luke 9, 58. And Jesus said unto him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. What does that tell you about the creator? That he provides. That he provides. That he he understands the birds can't always be flying around, right? They need a place to to rest, right? So he gave them a home. He gave each thing that he made. They have a place. They have a home. All right. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. 
Who's the son of man? Right, who is? God. Right, and does God get tired? God doesn't get tired. Are you sure about that? I, I don't think so. No, he, he says, I do not slumber or sleep. No, oh, you were doubting me? <laughs> no, you were doubting me. I was kidding you, actually. Go ahead. Um, what did I just say? I don't slumber or sleep. God does not slumber or sleep. He's very much awake. Um, Psalm 121. God does not slumber or sleep. Psalms 121. Three? Go ahead. There's more than one? If there are more than one scriptures, you like read. It says in this one, He will suffer your foot to be moved. He that keep thee will not slumber. Okay. Behold, yeah, yeah. Shall sleep, no. Yeah, that's it. Come on. Alright. Um, I'm going to do in doubt. That's not that doubt. You then my, go back. Go away. Go, go back where you come from. My, okay, go ahead. My help come from the Lord, which have made heaven and earth. Which tree? Wait, wait, what? what? Your help comes from who made? Heaven and earth. Okay, so. Anything that we want help in, who should we be running to? To Jesus, right? To God, right? Because he made all things, right? So he know everything. He know how everything is supposed to function. He knows everything that, um, how to say? He knows everything fully. He knows everything. So if we, all right, we're not going there yet. I almost fixed something here. Wait, wait, we're not going there yet. So he says, Go into um go into he sends out the seventy. What's your point here? We're gonna join these two. Because um must be ten forty. Um I didn't write it down. I think it was Luke ten, no? No. Yeah, it's Matthew. It's, I don't know. He sends out the seventy two by two. Mm-hmm. Matthew. Matthew? He receives me. Uh, uh, yeah, the one who sent me. Okay, go ahead. Receive the prophet because that one. No, no, no. He sent them out. He sent out the seventy two by two. Oh wait. You're looking at the wrong one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's Luke ten one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. So we were reading Luke fifty nine. That's how we drifted here. Mm-hmm. All right. So go ahead. He's bringing us back. So go ahead. Verse sixty two then. Uh huh. Then Jesus declared, "No one who puts his hand to the plow and then looks back is fit for the kingdom of God." All right. What does that tell you? Once you start it, finish it. So it's like a a, a field needs to be plowed. And if you don't continue, then the field won't be plowed. How are you going to plant your seeds? (laughs) How are you going to plant your seeds if the field isn't plowed? No, not last time. (laughs) How are you going to, how are you going to, um, plant your seeds if the field isn't plowed. You can't. The birds will eat it. The soil won't be properly well tilled and all this kind of agricultural things and where the seed has to go in there and, you know, be fully covered and all that. The birds are going to eat everything, right? Go ahead, read. No one having put his hand to the plow. What does that speak to you? What does that say to you? What is he saying to you? 
no one having put himself to the plow and was just looking back. Remember when he said it would have been better for him to have not known the way? It would have it would have been better for him to have not known the way than to have known the way of righteousness and turned away from it or something like that. Second mm -hmm. Peter two twenty one. You got it? Yeah, I just pull anything. Second Peter two twenty one. Second Peter two twenty one. I right, read it. Um if indeed they have escaped the corruption of the world uh -huh. through their knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, stop. So all the time that we're talking about a, a believer here that was a not, like all of us were at one time unbelievers that became believers, right? Mm -hmm. So we were in the world. Yes. Doing all sorts of craziness. Yes. Who's that? I don't know. Okay, I don't know either. All right. So we were in the world doing all sorts of craziness, and then Jesus called us out. So the Bible says, what? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Right? Yes. He comes to each one of us because we are what because we are his why wow, you move the whole thing and hold on the whole thing i'm propping on this thing yeah i know <laughs> go ahead you push it down okay okay go ahead um that's revelation 320 the what what Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Read it. Revelation 320. Yes. Let me see if I can find it. Let me read it. Um, as many as I love, uh -huh. I rebuke and chasten. Chastise. Well, it's not chasten. Chasten. Yeah. Chasten. My bad. You're chasten. <laughs> Be Go ahead. Zealous. Be zealous. Uh huh. Be on fire. Be. Go ahead. Zealous. Therefore. Desire it. And repent. And repent. Uh huh. Verse twenty. Behold. Wait. Read that again. As many as I love, I rebuke. Stop. As many as I love, I what? Rebuke. As many as I love, I rebuke. Uh huh. Chasten. 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 Chasen, go ahead, Chasen. Uh huh. He's Zelius. Zelius. Uh huh. He's Zelius, therefore, and repent. All right, so he said, as many as he loves, he chastens. Be Zelius, therefore, and repent. What does that tell you? It tells you sometimes when you're going on the wrong way, God is going to come after you with a whip. <laughs> With a whip, he said, um, what did he say? I hear him talking about the road, you know. <laughs> yeah, I hear him talking about the road. Oh, it's a whip. Okay, here we go. He said, um, the, what, something about spear in the road. Father, that spears the road does not love the sun. Something like that. Yeah, like, yeah, like spear. S P A R E. Right? Does not the Father spears the road does not what? Just 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 put Bible verse right there. Father that spears the road, do not spear the road. 
It says it's in Proverbs somewhere. Anything? With Proverbs? Yeah, Proverbs 15, 24. All right. Proverbs what? 1324. 1324. Uh-huh. Verse 20. Lex. Lex. Abundant food is in the foul ground of the poor. Mm -hmm. But without justice, it is swept away. Mm -hmm. Verse 24. He Wait. Stop. I hear him saying. What did he say? Blessed are the meek. They shall inherit the earth. Find it. Um, Matthew 5, the attitudes. Go ahead. This is, um That's Matthew 5, 5. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this thing straight. Oh, that works. Here we go. Um, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who. Blessed are the meek. No, the first one. Oh, the, blessed are those who mourn. Who mourn? Mourn what? What is happening? They will be Why are they mourning? Why do people mourn? When they lose something or want something, I don't know. When they want something, you when cried they, on it, please. <laughs> when they lose, when they lose <laughs> something, when they lose something. Okay, why do people mourn when you? Uh -uh, no, no emotion. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, you have to speak it loud to them, not me. Mm -hmm. I can't figure out. Why? Why do people mourn? Because they need comfort. I guess. Right. And why do people need comfort? Because. Start with E. F. 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 L. I. C. P. Affliction. Because of affliction. So they mourn because of afflictions, right? And going with how we go in here in this thing that he's given us, he's pointing us exactly there. It's like like when he said, um go into the city go into the city and place a mark on every man that cries over the abomination being done here. Size, right? Size, right? Size, S I G H. Um, where is it? Oh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 9 4. Mm hmm. Well, the scripture revelation inside there, rapture inside there, everything inside there. Go ahead, read it. Go into the city mm -hmm. and place. Um, then, verse 3, then the glory of the God. Of Israel rose then from above the cherubim where it had been. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Woo, lots of things happening there. Wait, what? Go ahead, read. He was in the throne room. How the, is your throne room? Okay, know. go ahead. Yeah. Then the glory of the God of Israel rose from above the cherubim where it had been yeah. and moved to the threshold of the temple. Uh huh. So the glory of the Lord moved from where? The cherubim. Above the cherubim. He moved from above. He, what? Above the cherubim. Above the cherubim, which is what? The throne. Yeah, but that's the like the. Okay, it is the throne room, right? It represents the throne room, but we're talking about the Ark of the Covenant. That's the 
So he moved from there, and where did he come? No. That's the trash hole right there. That that bump. And remember what we just read, going back. Behold, I stand where? At the at the door. Yes, at the door. Go back there. Don't lose this one, but go back there. Revelation. Oh, Revelation yeah, 319. This one you read was Ezekiel. 94. 94. Alright. I'm missing one. I'm missing Matthew. Okay, here we go. It's Matthew 5 5. Yeah. Alright, come on. So, behold. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Which door? Door of what? Yeah. Your door. Okay, yeah. Okay. What's your door? My heart. Mm hmm. You door of your heart. That's exactly where he's knocking. Uh huh. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him, I guess that is. Sup, like dine? Yeah. Sit down, have a chat. And he with me. Stay with him. That When you, you do that with people you love, go ahead. And he with me. And he with me, uh huh. With 21. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to him that overcome, uh -huh. will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Mm -hmm. Even. As I also overcame, and I'm set down with my father in his, in his throne. Okay, go back and see Ezekiel now. Ezekiel nine, right? Yes, four. Right, read this. There's some action things you know. This is the, this is the um, Armageddon. This is rapture. This is all kinds of things. Then the glory of the God of Israel rose up from above the cherubim uh -huh. where it had been and moved to the threshold of the temple and he called to the man folded in linen so he left his uh-huh and came where uh -huh. ding 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 what does that say to you one name what one name. Listen to the spirit and stop boxing him down. Listen. Listen to him and what he's saying. What name? Father looking for Emmanuel. Yeah, yeah what well, you see exactly? And you just knocking him down and saying shut up. I think him. Don't do that. No. <laughs> come on. Alright, come on. Go ahead. Uh, Emmanuel. Go for Emmanuel. Read it. No, we already rest. No, find Emmanuel in the Bible. Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. Does it two M's or one M? Two M's. M and M. Emmanuel. I think one is in Matthew one, and one is in Isaiah. Is that Matthew 1, 22, Read that. And the excellent Isaiah 7, 14. Ding, ding. Okay. Isaiah 7, 14. 7, 14. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Which one? Both. Matthew. Okay. Whichever one's first. Verse 22 of Matthew 1. Mm -hmm. All this took place. To fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. Aha, uh -huh, wait. Go back into Ezekiel now. Hold it right there. Go back into Ezekiel. Yes, I am there. Read it. From with the, the prophet. From the beginning? No, with the prophet. What? The Lord left his throne and came to thee and said to the man with the writing. Yeah, yeah. Read that. But that's. The first one, right? Yeah, just read it. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Alright, and he called to the man who lived within linen, who had the right in kit. Linen. What does linen represent? Um, that's something to do with 
Uh huh. What does that mean? Yes, but what what does it represent? Starts with R. I. G. H. T. What's up? Right. What right? Righteousness. Stop knocking on the man and let him speak. Yes, the righteousness. It represents the righteousness of the. Means yes. Find it. All right. So Isaiah seven. Of Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah. You got it. Mm hmm. Um. That's Revelation nineteen eighteen. Mm hmm. Revelation 19 is 1 9? Yeah. All right, yeah. Verse 7. Let us rejoice and celebrate and give him the glory. Uh -huh. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. Uh -huh. And his bride has made herself ready. Stop. What? Read that again, again. Read it again. Go back. Let us rejoice and celebrate. Uh huh. We're celebrating. Uh huh. And give him the glory. And give him the who? God. Right. Give God the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. The marriage of the Lamb has come. Go ahead. And his bride has made herself ready. Uh huh. Ezekiel. Nine four. Nine four. No. No, that's Revelation 9, 19. Oh, but go to Ezekiel 9, 4 now. Yeah, there. All right, read. From the beginning. So what is he doing? Wait, yeah, go ahead, read. Then the glory of the God of Israel rose up from... That's the beginning? Yeah, from above the cherubim. Uh-huh. Where it had been and moved to the threshold of the temple. Uh -huh. And he called to the man clothed in linen, who had the writing kit at his side. He called to the man with the linen and the writing kit at the sun. What does that tell you about the guy? He's someone of God. Mm -hmm. So God is like, he's a prophet. Yes. Oh, very good. And what is that telling you about him? What else? He is righteous. He's righteous. He's one of the righteous saints. And that writing thing, no. Well, you said it already. He's a prophet. Huh? So then yeah, it is. But go ahead. Who, like, okay. So what is what is this guy doing right now? What is God doing? He called the guy. Right. For what? Like he's talking on the phone. No, what? <laughs> he called him for a purpose. Remember when God says. He will not do anything until he reveals his servants and the secrets of his servants and prophets. Alright, so that's someone in a second. God. Yeah, where is it? He wants to treat something. It's now. <laughs> you don't start. <laughs> okay, he will do nothing until he reveals it to his servants. And then um, I heard something else. Just that um, the saints will judge the world. Go there. Going into, well, you tell me. First Corinthians 6 2. Okay, so Amos 3 7 and First Corinthians 6 2. 6 2. Alright. Which one are you reading, please? Whichever one you spirit tell you to me. I guess we're going to. I guess? Yeah, but I listen to your voice. <laughs> Amos. 
Ah, uh, Amos, yeah. Okay, reading. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. If a trumpet sounds in a city. If a trumpet sounds in a city. Will the people not tremble? I will. If calamity comes to a city. Not the Lord caused it. Yeah. Verse 7. Surely the Lord God nothing okay. without revealing his plan to his servants, prophets. Mm -hmm. Proceeds. So, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? Think about that. That nobody is um. That was, God will not just do something. Without that, you know, right? Yes, He will always send a. Uh, sign. That's a W. A wood. A. R. W E R. W E R N. W E R N. A warning. Yes, they'll send a warning. So mm -hmm. you see, they they'll always he'll always send a warning. Wait, what is it? I'm he'll right. always send a warning. <laughs> no, you because oh, Lord, <gasps> you always send a warning. You will say it loud. He will always send a warning. Say it, say it with power. He will always send a warning. Exactly, he'll always send a warning. Why? Because. So the army in the army we call this army. Because he desires no. non perish. Yeah, go ahead. I'll type in that. Yeah, find it. He desires non perish. That thing is supposed to be in us like clockwork. Okay, because um this is why he said to I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I'm blue again. This thing's like real colorful. How can I do this? That's bad. Oh. I missed him. Go ahead. So, he desires no one to perish. He desires nobody to perish. God doesn't want anybody to go into hell if he could if he that's why he died for the I'm whole world yeah. that's how we died for the, that's how we died for the whole world mm -hmm. the whole world i don't know what's going on this thing i'm gonna take off this phone and okay good go ahead and peter three nine okay read it with fire <clears throat> Beloved, Beloved, do not let this one thing escape your notice. Uh huh. What did he say? Do not let this one thing escape your notice. Don't let this one thing escape your notice. Always keep it what? In your mind. Look. In, in sight. Yeah, which is like F. P. O. C. U. S. Focus. <laughs> Yes, they always keep it in focus. Go ahead. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. Yes. And a thousand years are like a day. Uh-huh. So hear that. With God, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. He doesn't have the same timing like us, right? Obviously not, right? So the Bible tells us that God is not slow or slack concerning the things that he's going to do right he said that he would always he has a time frame for things to get done but sometimes we get a little too what um, impatient right we get impatient and we rush god and we rush this and we rush that and then we get burned and then we complain and then we're like lord why but god says my timing is not your timing, so why did you, you know, whatever, whatever. In all our circumstances, sometimes we want things right now. But, but what? We have to wait. And that is a fruit of the patience. Is a fruit of the. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> you got to speak in love. Here we go. <laughs> It's a fruit of the spirit. 
So what did I say there? Um, he's not close lock concerning his promises. Find that right. What? He's not slow or slack concerning his promises, that but like is patient. But is patient with you. I hear him saying something about each in his time. Each in his time. I don't know. We'll find it just now. We'll find it. He says it is there. Found it. Shovel of the little That's a complete Akina. What do you mean? It's like, but he was reading just now. Yeah, that's. He desires nobody to perish. Yeah, but when I say he needs to stop, that's really the wrong Okay, read. Go read verse 8 then. Um, okay, I read it already. You read it already? The love. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do not let this one thing right. escape your notice. Right. For the Lord, it is like a thousand years. And right. A thousand years are like a day. Right. Verse 9. The mm -hmm. Lord is. Power. The Lord is not power. Slow. The Lord is not slow mm -hmm. to fulfill His promise. Mm -hmm. As some understand slowness, but is patient with you, mm -hmm. not wanting anyone to perish, mm -hmm. but everyone to come to repentance. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be dissolved in the fire, and the earth. And it works, will not be found. That's a lot, there, boy. All right. So God knows that this day is coming. Of course, He knows the timing of the day because His His time is not our time. So no matter how many times we could calculate, you hear people saying, "Jesus coming, Jesus coming in 2000, Jesus coming in 2012, Jesus coming in, Jesus coming, Jesus coming," and Jesus said, "Yet." Did Jesus ever say, "I'm coming as an hour"? You know. He said he don't we don't know. So he's always calling us to be what? Prep. Prepared. Prepared. Be prepared, right? He's always calling us to be prepared because he said we don't know the hour or the time or the day. Neither does the angels in heaven or the sun. Which means us even people who are led by his spirit don't know that day. So he says many. Um, Can you give back to me, please? I lost it. Many, many something. I lost it. Listen, you you speak now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Anything that he tells you right now. Many who are led by the spirit. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. Type it on. If he tells you that, I write him. Many. Who are led by the spirit. Many who are led by the spirit. Of God. Are sons of God. I think so. I, I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Read it. Thirteen. Number before and after. That's our rule. Um, verse fifteen. Mm -hmm. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye choose, so, if you what? To live after the flesh, you will die. But remember, we was reading something just now that said. We were run. We were in corruption. Yeah, we were. Where was that? <laughs> That's a good question. That is. <laughs> no, let's zoom in. Is scripture page full? No, it's just someone who said it. Yeah. 
That's so what I do. Like, oh, that's second Peter 2.21. Second Peter 2. Alright, read it. If indeed they have escaped the corruption of the world through right. their knowledge of the Lord and Stop. Savior. Stop. So, the Lord and Savior, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, if they escape the corruption of the world, of the world which is the... So, the flesh loves to indulge in things that are contrary to God, that will opposite to God. And the, the spirit, of course, opposes the, what the world has, whatever. Okay, how do, I, how do I put this in words? Give me, give me, read it again. If indeed they have escaped the corruption of the world through their knowledge. Stop, okay, here we go. So, God says, my people are perishing for a lack of knowledge so if if okay the the flesh loves things of the world the spirit loves things of god but they don't have the spirit yet they don't have the the knowledge to receive who Jesus. exactly some people don't even know who he is all they heard is what traditions told them, religions told them, they heard from a stranger, a passerby, all these sorts, you know. Okay, here we go. What did I say just now? My people are perishing. I remember. I remember. That's what we are for. Six. For a lack of knowledge, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Verse 5. Therefore shall thou fall. Was that Hosea? 5. Six. Woo, that's a lot of you on in there, but now you're going to put me to sleep. Go ahead. Verse 5. Therefore shall thou fall in the day, mm -hmm. and the prophet also shall fall with thee mm -hmm. in the night. Why? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. That's what it says. Read it again. Therefore shall thou fall in the day. Read, read, read the um the verses before that. Two verses before that, so we get a gist of what they're talking about. Read from one. For the, uh, for one. Hear the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Ye children of Israel, mm -hmm. for the Lord had a contrary. See controversy with the inhabitants mm -hmm. of the land because they was a controversy like a kind of like stuff like a squabble yeah the great controversy a mystery like a like a find a meaning <laughs> find a proper meaning like a like a squabble a like squabble is only thing human in my mind like a fight like a problem like a problem. Like yeah. something to be resolved. A controversy. The great controversy. A prolonged public disagreement. So I hit a discussion. A mm -hmm. deep argument. Contention. Go ahead. A prolonged heated discussion or That's disagreement. Deep. Or debate. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Hear the word of the word of the Lord. Hosea four verse one onwards. Yeah. Children of Israel, mm -hmm. for the Lord had a controversy with the inhabitants of the land mm -hmm. because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. Wow, that's a big problem. There is no truth, no mercy, no mercy and, no knowledge, and no knowledge. And God said, Remember when He said, I desire? Mm -hmm. That's what I was coming to, but no. Yeah, that. But he also said, I desire, that's an M, mercy, not sacrifice. Find it. So that was your foot. <laughs> that's my warm. I was like, my bag are warm. I lost my shoe somewhere around there. Matthew 9.15. Matthew 9, 13? Yeah. 13? Okay, read. Verse 12. 
<laughs> How are you guys doing me so? Stand it down below. Instead of, instead of, I used to do this when I'm like when I'm doing. Okay, man, watch me. Huh? Give me ten minutes, Duke, and I just drop down there. That's it. Go ahead. On hearing this, Jesus said, "It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick." Uh huh. It is not the healthy that need a doctor, but the so, if you're a doctor or a nurse or a surgeon or whatever, like somebody in the medical field, will you stick around healthy people only? Is that where your profession is? Where are you going to go? Where the unhealthy people is stick. Exactly. So, we'll talk about that. Like no, talk about it. Well, I mean, there's nothing to be healed. He's already right. Exactly. So what makes it need you? You guess. Yeah, I don't know. No, talk about it. Come on, talk about it. You can do it. Doctors will go to the, the um, sick. sick people. So they normally set up. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, we have hospitals and and health centers and stuff, but we're not looking at that right now. We're looking at, let's say, you're a doctor on a mission here. A mission. A what? mission. A mission. A mission doctor. Whatever. Yeah. You, you know, your servant. And the, the place where you are, everybody is what? Everybody. No, everybody's well. Okay. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> well, why do you hear that? Exactly. So everybody's well where that doctor is, right? Where is he going to go? Not there. Exactly. He's going to leave and he's going to look for people to heal because he only mission feel right um now jesus said the <laughs> no he said the sick a doctor not the well and just like that he said what did he say again um about us being sinners he has come to call. He's come for sinners, not the righteous. Find that. By the way, where is... Okay, anyway. Um, never mind. I've come for sinners, not the righteous. Luke 5.32 Read You got it? Mm -hmm. Verse 31 mm -hmm. Jesus answered It is not the healthy who need a doctor uh -huh. but the sick Aha! I have not come to call the righteous, mm -hmm. but sinners to repentance. And what did he say about that? Go ahead, read. Verse 33. Uh -huh. Then they said to him, John's disciples and those of the Pharisees frequently fast and pray, but yours keep on eating and drinking. Uh -huh. That's it. Uh -huh. The end. Mm hmm That's it? Yeah. Alright, explain. Well you tell them to go and fast and pray for them eat and drink it. No. <laughs> that's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it says the disciples of John they fast and pray. No. But your disciples are eating and drinking. Oh, what that's confusing then. Okay. It says that, right? Well, it says John's disciple and those of the Pharisees. Oh, yeah, frequently. Why is that? Remember when John said, I baptize with water, but he who comes after me baptizes with fire, right? So they have gotten a revelation that is what? Deeper than they. Exactly. So they have come to realize that it's not what is. <laughs> outside, 
out yeah it's not what you could see it's not what's outside but it's what's in right so it all depends on the sun. yes so they are they are washing their hands and they're eating right the, the other but they don't have the circumcision exactly they don't have the spirit they don't have the circumcision of the spirit so jesus is saying read it again you're good now Where, which one the same one oh yeah. you only Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Boy, live all right what rid of you sit up <laughs> you know yes sir you're going to sleep in a way on the couch on the chair on the couch go ahead then they said to him if he was a couch of conversation Mm. Then they said to him, John's mm -hmm. disciples and those of the Pharisees frequently fast and pray. Mm -hmm. But you always keep on eating and drinking. Mm -hmm. Remember when he said also that when the bridegroom is with you, you're going to rejoice. Right? Mm -hmm. Hint, hint. The bridegroom is there with them. He said, but when he's taken away, then they will fast and mourn i think mourn right when the, bridegroom. Mourn. when the bridegroom is with them they will they will rejoice they'll eat and drink there's no need for them to weep <sighs> huh? Matthew 9 15. Uh, he wants to line up scripture. When the bridegroom is with them, is with them they will rejoice or something. Yeah, I write in Matthew 9 15. 9 15. All right. Go ahead. Verse 14. You want me to read? Let me read. Let me read one. <laughs> Israel, wake up. Matthew 9 15. Yeah. About 10. 10? Because 10 is like right here. There we go. Verse 14. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples fast not? Plug it on. I'll leave it right there. Oh, no, just plug it on and leave it because... Um, the battery is almost dead. Yeah, plug it on. Just plug it. No, just plug it on right there. Okay. Yeah, just plug it on. Here we go. Yeah. Get the voice. Go ahead. Oh, me. Okay. Here we go. Then came to him the who? The disciple, um, John, Matthew, John, Matthew John, 9, John. verse 14. John, disciple. Yeah. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the, what, the, what, the far you see. Anytime you say Pharisees, remember, they only believe as much as they could. Exactly. The far you see. Okay. The Pharisees fast often, but your disciples don't fast. So in other words, why are we afflicted and they are not? Why are we made to, to carry all this load and, and your disciples don't? So what they want to do now? They're asking questions. What do they want to do? Not. They want to learn, right? They want to find out something. And Jesus said what? Ask and, and you will read. Ask and you will receive. I really broke the pen. Did I? No, I didn't. All right, here we go. 
Sorry, in verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye, pearl, cast ye your pearls before swine. Remember what he compared the dogs and swine to? The vomit and mud. Remember when the dog eating the vomit and the pigs rolling in the mud? How appetizing, I know. So, yep. least they trample them under their feet. Least they trample what? The pearls. So what are the pearls? Um, what do you think of the pearls? So they get trampled and then if you trade. Well, if you give them to the people who don't care. What are the pearls? He tells us, you know, he tells us exactly, he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl. So, Go ahead. Type it. The kingdom of heaven. Yeah, you check it out. The kingdom of heaven is like a pearl. And when a man found it, he saw all he had and bought it. Um, Matthew 1545. Read it. Verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure in a field. What a man found it, when a man found it, he hid it again. And in his joy, he went and sold all he had and bought that field. Huh? So wait. He found a treasure, you know, when some people, they're searching for treasure and they, um, when some people are searching for treasure, right, and they, they block off that entire area until they, they find the treasure, like they, they get a clue that it's there, and then they block off, they quarantine that whole area, and then they, they search, they find the treasure, and then they, yeah? So, the lost sheep, that is the people outside, they what? What are they doing? Ha! Ah, what are they doing? Tell them! They're looking for something. What are they looking for? They're looking for... What does God give? Uh-huh. That's a piece. Say it. Say it. You, you, come on, say it. You want to say it? E A P E Peace. Yeah, peace. God gives peace. What else they searching for? Uh huh. What else? Safety. What else? What else? They're searching for, yeah, because they don't like death. Nobody likes death. Come on, what else? Start with P again. What? You, you say it all the time. I mean, I say it all the time. You do, you say it all the time. Start with P, R, O, V. Providence. Ah, exactly. What is providence? What is that? <laughs> yeah, he... He, they search for all these things and so they're like the man here right now where are we reading read that again read it read it with power um verse 44 the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field when a man found it he hid it again why did he, what so he he found it and he hid it where did he hide it? I don't know where he hid it. Where did you hide it? What? Where did you hide it when you found him? In my heart. Ah, go ahead, yeah. And in his joy, he went and sold all he had and bought that field. Aha. Uh -huh. So he wants that treasure for himself. Because why? 
field. Alright, so why he bought the whole field? I mean, why do you think? Because the treasure is there. He found the treasure already. Why he bought the whole field? Because that's where the treasure comes from. Yeah. So what? Have more treasure. What? Have more treasure. Yes, now he's learning the spirit. Come on. So that field has more treasure. He wants to see, right? So in other words, he wants to see if there's more treasure. So in other words, when God, when when he gives us the revelation of who he is, what happens? We get, we get that treasure. We, we, we become knowledgeable of him. We get all the things that he gives. And now what? What happened to you right now? This one may sleep here. What happened to you right now? I, I don't know. You I want to let... what? Yes, and you want to what? Huh? Exactly, so you want to share. So it comes like if you found treasure and now you're what? Yeah. So now you kind of block off an area wherever you are and you want to see if there's more treasure. Yeah. Right. So you want people to have what you have, right? Right. Oh, you, you want to say yes? You want to speak it out? <laughs> I know, but you have to speak it, not me. Come on, speak. It was 45. Mm -hmm. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine food. Mm -hmm. This boy six. When he found one very precious pool, he went away and sold all he had and brought it. He what? He went and sold all he had and brought it. Uh huh. Why? He's like bought it. He's I like a clock. Uh, a clock. A clock. Bought it. He's like a collector, not a collector. He's like a collector, right? Of 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 let's say antiques or you know I don't know rare find. When he finds this thing, it's like I've been looking my whole life for this thing, and that is how souls are out there. That is how they are. Those in other flocks or in not in Christianity, but those who are in Hinduism, those who are in Huh? Speak it. Speak it. Come on, you have to speak it. Speak it boldly. Islam. Those who are in Islam, those who are in Hinduism, those who are in Catholicism. No, Christianity is following Christ. Come on, those who are in Buddhism, all these kind of isms, right? Those who are in the isms are not in the Christ. So they go through their life seeking. Seeking God in spirit and in truth. If they do want to really find him, there will there will come a time in their lives where you or me or somebody out there who are in love with Christ or know Christ will bring him to them. Or bring them to him, rather. Read. Read it again. Let me read it. Matthew 13, verse what? 45. Verse 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking godly or goodly fine pearls. What does that tell you? It's like a collector item. You like you like what do you like to collect? Anything? No. So let's say you like to collect something. We why 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 that? That is weeds. You, you know people like to collect weeds. What weeds? Weeds. 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 Weeds, weeds like grass. Yeah, like grass, like ferns. Okay, I just make it short. <laughs> Not a ganja plant. Huh? I don't know why someone is coming No, uh, weeds. Weeds like, um, okay, like ferns. Yes, yes. Let me see a fern. Like somebody who collects ferns. That, that's boring, but, or somebody like has a stamp collection. 
or somebody who likes stickers or comic books or baseball cards. You get what I'm going? And they find one that they've been searching for for like their whole life. What do they do? Exactly. That is what God wants us to do. And that is what he's saying here. So we, when we buy this, when we get this treasure, we buy this field. We want to find more. Hmm? We want to find more. More treasure? Yeah, you sure? Yeah. Yeah, there's more treasure we want to find, actually. And what what that treasure is to us? Everything. What the treasure is, literally? Everything Which, yeah, and what is it? What is it that we're really looking to do? <laughs> um. Go on! So we have to, to see this. Huh? <laughs> I, I don't know. Do you don't know what's going on? Come I on. You ask me. Come on. What do we what do we do when we find okay, we know that Jesus is Lord and Savior. We know the good things that he can give. We have the peace that a lot of people don't have. What do we want to do with it? Huh? Share. You sure? Share Yeah. We want to share it. Yes. Are you sure? I'm sure. Tell them that. We share it. Why? Because none shall perish. Wow, good job. Okay, because it's a perfect treasure. It's something that you you're filled with, you're satisfied with, you have uh uh I don't know what looking to say here. a peace that surpasses everything you could pass through in this life you have a uh, something else what yeah peace um comfort food yeah you have provision you have comfort you have that's what e e s s s what? He keep um he he saw nothing. He saw I don't know who it is. I don't know who it is. A S S. I see what. I we saw an A S S. Confused. You are. Yeah, A S S is what? What? A S S is A S S is what? A donkey. What is us? S U R. I am. Huh? No, you spell it out. A S S. You are. You are. Yay! You have the assurance of your what? Of my life. Yes, your what life? My eternal life. Yay! Yes, so you have the assurance of your eternal life. And that's what some people are looking to find and they can't find. And when they can't find it, then they become. That's an F. That's who. Say it. I don't know. You're shutting off this. I see it. Come on, say it. Come on, say it. Say it. F E A. Exactly. They become fearful, not fearless. They become fearful. Right. So you. So they are. They are fearful when they don't know where they're going. That's why some people they're afraid to die. You ever see a person who's scared to die? Like terrified. Yeah. Exactly. So they don't know where they which is sad. It's sad, right? Are you sad? Jesus said, 
I know where I come from and where I am going. You don't know where you come from, where I come from, or where I go. It really gets shorter, it's shorter. I see it only ahead. I see it only ahead. Oh no. I know where I come from. <laughs> you know it? I know where I come from, but you, you don't know. You do not know where I am. I know where I come from and where I'm going. You don't know. You do not know where I come from or where I'm going. Or something like that. I know where I come from and where I'm going. Sorry, you don't talking. know where I come from or where I'm going. Are you where are you going? Talking to the Pharisees. Yeah, John eight fourteen. Huh? John eight fourteen. John eight? Fourteen. Oh John eight fourteen. Matthew 13, 45 is what we... Uh-oh. Found it. I broke it. Well done. Here we go. So give me Matthew. Ay caramba. So we're looking at John. John what? 814. Come on, read. So the Pharisees said to her, This is embarrassing. You are testifying about yourself. I understand. Your testimony is not valid. What? How it's dare valid. you? What? Will you tell him? Wait, read. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> read again. <laughs> so the Pharisees said to him, You are te um, testifying about yourself. Your testimony is not valid. So stop. So the Pharisee says, You're testifying about yourself. Your testimony is not valid. What is he saying about himself? Read, read, no, yeah, he knows that's Jesus to talk more. Yeah. Oh, the Pharisees don't know, but read, um, from 12. You have run to the love for me. He'll set me free. Once again, uh huh, Jesus spoke to the people and said. I am the light of the world. Uh -huh. Whoever follows me will never walk in the darkness, uh -huh. but will have the light of life. Uh -huh. So the Pharisees said to him, You are testifying about yourself. So he said, I am the light of the world and the salt of the earth. What's wrong with that? I don't know. Which means they are in the. What? If he's the light and they don't like that, oh, they, they, they're the exactly. Look how look how easy that is to see. Like he's just saying, "I'm the light of the world and the salt of the earth." That's what he said, right? Mm -hmm. So, which means they are walking in the they're walking in the darkness, and the light has shone on them, and they don't like it because it's uncovering what they're doing there. So, as well as he said, he's the salt. Which means they are. Look how much salt left, huh? They flavor less. Yeah, they taste less, exactly. They have no richness. So they're not going to be taken to the table of God. You, you sure? <laughs> Read it. Read it again. I like that. Read it. Once again. 
John, John 8, John 8, 12. Oh, yeah. Once again, Jesus spoke to the people and said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, mm -hmm. but will have the light of life. Mm -hmm. But will have the light of life. So, so they, they want to remain dead in their sin. Clearly. Mm -hmm. How clearly? Go over here. So the Pharisees said to him, you are testifying about yourself. Your testimony is not valid. Uh -huh. Your testimony is not valid because you say in that you're the light. Oh. Go ahead. Verse 14. Jesus replied, even if I testify. He told us as well in Luke 24, 32. Remember with the eyes opening thing? Remember they had to get up, up their own testimony of him. In Luke 24, 33. We read that today? No. Uh, Last week, something. Where they were walking on the road with him, and he started to teach them all the stuff from Moses and the prophets. Check it. Luke 24, 30 to 33. And their eyes were open, and they knew him. Oh, that. Oh, that. Yeah, that. Oh, what? what were you trying just now? Hmm? No, John. In John 8.14, what were you finding? Oh, I was reading. Oh, you're talking about the Pharisees. Right? What, what were you? We oh, I know where I'm going. Go ahead. From, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Try and look 24. I know where I am going and where I come from. So what does this tell us that there are a lot of what? Blind. Blind people outside, right? <laughs> you gonna make me yawn? I can't do anything else. Go ahead. When this is twenty four, at least fifty. Uh huh. When he had reclined at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it. So first he did what? He said to them. First he would no. What was he doing before that? Okay, go back. Go back about two verses. Twenty. Even verse 27, I don't know. What about that? No, verse 27. Check verse 26. 26 to 33. Sorry. <laughs> Was it necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into the glory? Then with 37, then beginning with Moses. 27, right? Yeah, 27. Okay, you said 37. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Then the beginning with Moses and with all the prophets. Uh -huh. He explained to them uh -huh. the things concerning himself. So there are people outside like this. There are people that are just following religion and tradition. They don't know what they're following, but because mommy and daddy did it, and granny and grandpa, and grand great granddad and great grandmom and e so everybody's doing the same thing right they joined in so now these here by the way peter's there you know peter's one of them peter's one who he's talking to them. peter's one who he's explaining to no they witnessed the crucifixion, but they could not recognize Jesus. So he's walking with them by the road. And they're like, you didn't hear what happened to Jesus. Um, the great prophet who came here and he, he, they crucified him. They're asking Jesus if he didn't hear what happened to him. 
That is how blind we can be. Jesus could be among us. And we would be so caught up in ourselves that we are blind. So when he died on the cross, something happened in the temple. What happened? I like what you're saying, no. He break it down. He did. The temple did fall, but he did something else. What did he do? I don't know. Think something in the temple happened. Yeah, he broke down the temple, okay, but something else happened. The earthquake happened, and something happened. Huh? This was torn. The veil. The veil was torn in the temple. You know what that means? I'm going to explain to you now. Okay, so the veil is something that blocks off the most holy place from the rest of the tabernacle, right? So God dwells in the in the most holy place, right? So the veil is there, and only the high priest could go in there and make intercession for the people with the blood of the lambs and the rams and the bulls and whatever, right? Right? So the people were in essence what? From God. They were what? They were blocked out. That veil blocked. It represented a breach that no man could really break. So when Jesus died on the cross, that veil came like heaven and earth. Between heaven and earth. See how that goes? So the veil was what? Yes, it was torn from top to bottom. From bottom to top to top to bottom. The veil was torn from top to bottom or bottom to top. So this is what some people are wearing on their faces. Well, the majority of the world actually, everybody in the world, they're still wearing the veil because only what? O Damo Shayel Yeshua. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Only the blood of Jesus rips the veil. Only the blood of Jesus breaches that barrier. Making sense? Yeah. Go ahead. You found it? Mm-hmm. What did it say? It's Matthew 27, 51. Matthew? 27, 51. 27, 51. Uh-huh. 50. Uh-huh. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. Uh-huh. Verse 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twi- what? Twi- two. What? Uh-huh. Two. From the top to the bottom. That's what I heard. Here we go. So when he had given up the ghost, go ahead. Um, and behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two mm-hmm. from the top to the bottom. Mm-hmm. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. You know what the rocks rent mean? You know what rent is? Yeah, it's a fall apart. So everything come up, come down. Hmm. Oh, happy day. Yeah. So, what happened was the veil was torn, and that represented what? The, uh, the separation between our son. Him. Our son, who? Jesus. On heaven. On God. Our son, God. So, the Bible says that there's one mediator between God and man. One mediator. Good. <laughs> I, 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 
when I talk, I'm hearing him speaking. <laughs> I see a jump. I was going away. There is one. Close to me, two parts. What? First Timothy 2 5. Oh, three. Before, uh -huh. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? Uh huh. For there is one God and so one. So, you see where he's bringing us back? Where did he bring us back? To people being saved. Uh huh. And what was that? God desires nobody to perish? Yeah. Right, go ahead. Verse 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men. Uh huh. The man Jesus Christ. Amen. And? Verse 6, who gave himself as a ransom for all the testimony that was given at just the right time. That's it. Listen to that. Read it again. That last line. Slowly. Who gave With himself. power. Who gave himself. As a ransom. As a ransom for what? For all the testimony. For what? All the testimony. All the, what do you mean? All who testimony? What do you ransom himself for? Everybody. Exactly. So all whose testimony? All. Exactly. At? Right there. Wow. That is powerful right there. Read that again. With power. Who gave himself? No, read really the whole thing. All. Read from two to, two four to six. Who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth? Uh huh. For well, there is one God and one mediator. So he desires all men to be saved. Everyone Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Noarian, atheist, some kind of Christians, all, all kinds. Everybody. He wants everybody saved. Go ahead. There is one God and, and one to come to the knowledge. The knowledge. All right. And I hear him speaking and he says, how, how will they go if they are not sent? And how will they preach? Go ahead. Find that. Romans 10, 15. Romans 10, 15. It's so scrappy, right? Yeah, but that's all right. One line looks, looks cool. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 14. Uh huh. Verse oh, 15, not 5. Uh huh. Yes. How then can they call on the one in whom they have not believed? Wait, what? How do we call on the one who they did not believe? That makes sense, right? Yes. Because knowledge goes to the you you got to do this day now. You got to knowledge goes to the mind. Body, I, what, I I Exactly. It is so knowledge goes to the mind. Right, and it's registered. And then whatever the mind says yes to, it goes to the heart. It goes to the heart. And then that is the yes, that is the that is the um. That's a B. The B. Say it. Belief. Yeah, that's the belief, and it goes to the spirit, to God, to yeah, what? To your works. It, it works. So it becomes your. Becomes yeah, it becomes your actions. You're right. So say that in a complete sentence now. So knowledge is taken to the head. And whatever, whatever you hear and per, and perceive or accept in. Go, ahead. go ahead, you say that, not me. Whatever you perceive. As go, truth. As truth is go to your head. Right, always go to your head. Yeah. Not yeah. like alcohol. Oh. It hurts your head. No. Okay. Whatever, whatever you perceive as truth is accepted in. Use that word accepted in. Okay, it's accepted into the mind. Mm -hmm. Finds a place in the mind. They say, yes, boy, ah, 
I believe that. And then? To prove to you. Why go in the house? Because they're already passed through the initial stages. So right. No so, so you, wow. So you, so you have received whatever you received. That's true for you. Yeah. So your heart got that in. Lock it up. And now what? Yeah, yeah. Now you're going to act accordingly. Yes. Yeah. All right. So here we go. So read that now. Romans 10, 15, 14. How then can they call on the one in whom they have not believed? Mm -hmm. And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? Ah, stop. So they can't call on somebody they don't believe. Yes. They just won't do it. And and what? And call on the one. And call. How can they believe in the one who they have not heard? So they've not heard about him to believe in him. They've not heard the truth. And the Bible says, when the truth comes, he will Give. set us free. He'll give salvation. He'll set us free. And what else? And um, how can they hear without someone to preach? Aha! Uh -huh. What was that? How can they hear without someone to preach? He said that loud with conviction. How can they hear without someone to preach? He said loud. How can they hear without someone to preach? Exactly. How can they hear without somebody to preach? So if nobody goes to them, so how are they going to know? And if they don't know, how are they going to believe? And if they don't believe, how, how are they going to call on him? It's a process, isn't it? Go ahead. Verse 16. Uh -huh. Verse 15. And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written. So, so nobody go in, so nobody can't say nothing. So it's like the doctor then. If the doctor remains in his land, wherever the area is, yeah, land, whatever, <laughs> that where there's no sick people, how, the sick going to get well in the next land? Of course not. How are you so sure? Because, this, I mean, they could with the sick, right? No, but, uh, how can the sick, if the doctor doesn't go to them, how can they get the, the treatment? Well, they don't get any treatment from the doctor. Exactly. So, how are the people going to know about Jesus? Go to hey, him. hello. They have to go to him. So they have, they, he, so he has to go to them. They have to go to him, or he has to go to them. And how does Jesus, how is the word of Jesus spread? Hmm. Evangelism. Mm hmm. Well, I. That's it. What else could do? What else? Do you just speak it, right? Mm -mm. What else? Then? Even. Well, yeah, well, as if people go to them. Right, definitely. Read it. Read it out. Read Romans 10 14. Oh. How can they call on the one in whom they have not believed? This 14? Yeah. Yeah. And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? Mm -hmm. And how can they hear without someone to preach? Mm -hmm. Verse 15. How can they preach unless they are sent? Mm -hmm. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Aha. Uh -huh. So the Bible tells us that we must, we have to go out there. God is basically ordaining us to Huh? Preach. To preach, exactly. And it's not just by words, but by? Feet. Huh? Feet. By feet? Uh, no. By action. By. By. By action. Stop with the feet that I want to speak. By actions. So it's actually by actions. So we have to go there and what? Mm. Yes. By spreading, I don't, I don't know what you're doing. You're preaching. I, I really don't. By know. the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Okay. I don't know how that's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, I hope I just doing this. 
Spanish. By the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Not by excellent speech, but by the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Not by excellent speech. Yeah. So what God is sending us out to do the work. And I hear him saying again, now we're going into the 70s. From First Corinthians two four. Hmm? First Corinthians two four. First Corinthians two four. Wait, what is this? Oh. Huh? Just um. Okay. Yeah, this not kind of thing kind of. Mm-hmm. Oh, verse 3. I came to you in weakness. Verse 3. Yeah, I came to you in weakness. Oh, okay, go ahead. Unfair. Uh huh. And with much trembling. Mm-hmm. Verse 4. My message and my preaching were not with persuasive words of wisdom, mm-hmm. but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. With what? The demonstration of the Spirit's power. Read that again. My message and my preaching were not with persuasive words. Right, no them, eloquent words, no eloquent words, uh huh. But with the demonstration of the Spirit's power. So that is 1 Corinthians 2 4. That is an important message that you need to remember for healing. So take a note. 1 Corinthians 2 4. Go ahead, lodge it. They're, they're lodging? Maybe. What is it? What is the, the scripture? That you have to you do not. What is the scripture? Oh, this thing? No, I'm sure. No, no, we're asking, we're asking. What is the scripture? We're telling you. Yeah, what is the scripture tell? What is the that scripture? I'm looking, I'm looking. That, um. <laughs> wait, wait, hold <huh? laughs> I was gonna say something there. Um, Is it what Matthew? Matthew, you Matthew six. Oh. Philemon. First Corinthians two four. Oh, first Corinthians two four. Uh-huh. You demonstrate with the um three spirit power. Uh huh. Not with. Words of wisdom. Right. Not not words of wisdom. Not with eloquent words. Not I'm impressive words. Some people wisdom like wisdom. they have a lot of impressive words. The biggest words you could find in the dictionary, and when you check them out, they empty out the spirit. Going, going, going. Okay, going, going. <laughs> I sound like Miyagi. So, verse 5 then. So that your faith would not rest <laughs> on men's wisdom. Wait, why are we going on, 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 on? So that your faith would not rest on men's wisdom, but uh-huh. on God's power. So that your faith would not rest on men's wisdom. Uh-huh. But on. So he wants to bring them, us, into trusting him. But he's using us as vessels to go out there and share that word, right? Okay, go back. Yes. So now we're going to the seventh year with sent. I don't know where I find it. Type it, type it. Type it in. Just open the next window and type it in. Luke 10, 1, I think. Luke 9, Luke 10, 1. Yeah. So read Luke 9. You're right. And take nothing with you. Okay. And t- take nothing with you. Don't carry anything. On your purse. Boom! Yum, yum, yum. Luke 9 3. 962? 9 3. Oh, okay. For now. Mm-hmm. Wait, what, what was it? I think nothing with you. Oh, that one. Mm. Take, take nothing with you. 
9 3? Yeah. Luke 9 3. Uh huh. So read in 62, right? Mm -mm. Read this one. Luke 9 3. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God. Luke 9 3? Yeah. Uh huh. He sent them out. You read in verse 2, right? Mm hmm. Uh huh. He sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Take nothing for the journey, he told them. Mm -hmm. No staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no second tunic. Mm -hmm. Tunic or clothing. Clothing, yeah. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that area. Mm -hmm. That's it. And now read. So, okay. That's verse 4? Yeah. Really? It's kind of short though. And read the other one. We could. <laughs> Stop yawning. <laughs> That's why I am normally and I say, look, I need a 10 minutes. Can you need a 10 minutes? No. Okay. Read it. Where, where are we? Time to speed up. Yeah. Then Jesus declared, no one who puts his hand to the plow and then looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Aha. Uh -huh. So if you started that way, if you started that way, you can't. You can go back. What? Don't go back. Oh. Go ahead. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others. 70. And sent them two by two. I see 70. You see 72? 72. 70 hyphen 2. Others. I see 70. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also. And sent them two by two. Yeah? 70 hyphen 2. 72. No, that wrong. Oh, we just go 70. And, the, <laughs> and this Lord, and after this, the Lord appointed 70. Find the King James Version. KGV. KJV. Can you see? <laughs> you are contagious. King James Bible. Uh huh. Luke 10 1, King James Vision. From it? Um, yeah. Uh -huh. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, uh -huh. whither he himself would come. Alright, so he himself going into these places. Go ahead. Verse 2. Therefore he said unto them, The harvest truly is great, mm -hmm. but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, mm -hmm. that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. So what? Real things happen there. Real things happen there. Alright, so after these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place every single place when we said he don't desire anybody to perish right yeah. search them out find them soldier okay here we go whether he himself would come but he himself going there therefore said he unto them what um, the, harvest the harvest is truly, is truly great there's plenty, many, many souls out there mm -hmm. just waiting for a word, waiting to know Jesus. But again, how can they be believing? Yeah, how can they be believing if they don't hear? I know we have to be content. Learn that order. But yeah, you get the point. So he says, The harvest is great. 
but the, the laborers are few. Few people want to do the work. Pray, therefore, the Lord of the harvest. He's Lord of the harvest. And he would send forth laborers into the harvest. So if you need help us, what God going to do? Provide. He's going to send. That's why he sent you. Very well. And that's why he's, he's recruiting Nicholas. And that's why. <laughs> and that's why, that's why um, he's going to call many, many others, all right? So he says, he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Because again, the kingdom of heaven is like a... Yeah. That. Or treasure. That when a man finds, he... he, he wants, yeah, he, he, he treasures it. He cherishes it. And then he wants to make what? Share. He wants to make more. Yeah, he wants to share it. Okay. So, and it says go, oh, I'm sorry. That's it. All right. Let's end it for here for now. We're we supposed to read all of that, actually. We have to read all this in red. Read it. No? Or later? Read all what's in red. The rest of the yeah. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Miriam! <laughs> Carry, this is what I heard. Carry, oh, here we go. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Lambs among wolves. Will that ever go well? Of course it will. What? What? Oh, that will go, well. go well because the shepherd is in front of us. <laughs> yeah, the wolves are going to eat the lambs, that's true, in a natural setting. Carry neither purse nor scrip, nor shoes, and salute no man, by the way. And in whatsoever house you enter, first say, Peace be unto this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. This is true, by the way. So Wherever we go, peace be to this house. house. And if the if Jesus is there, if the, if the Spirit of God is there, they're going to welcome you in. And it says in verse 6, And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. And if not, it shall come back to you again. Verse 7, and in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. So you ought to stay there. All right. And verse 8, and in whatsoever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. Let me believe some weird things, you know, I, uh, moving on. Verse 9, and heal the sick that are therein, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. Verse 10, but into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not, go your way out into the streets of the same, and say, verse 11, even the very dust of your city which cleaves on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. So if they reject it, they reject it. Uh oh. Um we, we got a verse like that somewhere. Right? He who receives you receives me. Mm -hmm. Somewhere. <laughs> You're like, you're falling asleep. Close your eye, close your eye. No. Close your eye, just close your eye for a little bit. Just like, take a shot. Then. Here we go. And he says, um, verse 12, But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than that city. Oh boy. And then he said in verse 13, Woe unto thee, Charizin. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works have been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, 
they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. So if these cities were warned in the way that people are being warned, they would have long ago turned into sackcloth and ashes, worshipping God and just repenting. But he said, an evil and adulterous generation seek after signs. And that's the generation we are. Woohoo. Okay. And it says in verse 14, oh, I read it already. Verse 14, and it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment down for you. And verse 15, and thou Capernaum, which art exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down into hell. Verse 16, he that heareth you, heareth me, and he that despiseth you. What does it say? Despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despises him that sent me. Ouch. All right, so we're going to end it here for a while. Just end it here. And when I go home later, we'll continue. We just have a little bit to go again, and we're almost finished. Yay. Bye, guys. <laughs> no, not yet. you got to pray. Thank God for leading us. <laughs> Thank you, God, for leading us to this prayer. Yes. To show us the the work and feel that you want us to do and how we ought to go about it. Mm -hmm. And what is the importance of the work? That more souls will come to your kingdom. To be about your business. Above everything else. Say, mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. End it. Do you have anybody there? Yeah, not some people there. Oh. Adios. Say goodbye in Jesus' name. Jesus loves you.